The U.S. Army is actively preparing for the battles of tomorrow, working to develop the latest deadly combat vehicles with integrated artificial intelligence. One such vehicle is the subject of today's video. Meet the OMFV. But before moving on to explain this new generation of combat vehicles, let's recall what its predecessor, the Bradley M2, was like. Named after a World War II U.S. Army general, the Bradley M2 has become one of the world's most important armored vehicles, the primary missions of which are reconnaissance, troop transportation, providing protection, as well as suppressing and eliminating hostile threats. Introduced into service at the height of the Cold War back in 1981, this machine displayed its combat potential well in the Persian Gulf War, the Iraqi invasion, and other subsequent major conflicts. During Operation Desert Storm, it turned out that in combat, the Bradley was even more effective than the legendary Abrams, significantly outdoing the latter in terms of the number of destroyed Iraqi armored vehicles. Due to its high mobility and ease at which it overcame rough terrain, the BMP handled various obstacles no worse than the tanks. And although the Bradley M2 has repeatedly assisted the infantry in some of the hottest spots on the planet, successfully fulfilling its designated roles and tasks, higher command was of the belief that after more than 30 years of hard work, the time had come to update this war machine considerably. And this is how the idea of the OMFV program was born. The OMFV is part of the U.S. Army's global program to develop and purchase a variety of armored vehicles to enhance the capabilities of its units and replace existing platforms that are nearing the end of their service life. The Army has already tried twice to replace the Bradley M2, first as part of the Future Combat System program, which was canceled by the U.S. Secretary of Defense in 2009, and then during the Ground Combat Vehicle program, which suffered the same fate only in 2014. The elimination of the latter wasn't as cheap for the U.S. as the government would have liked, forcing taxpayers to shell out a whopping $1.5 billion. However, these difficulties only served to convince the military leadership that they were correct in their decision. In 2014, General Dynamics Land Systems and Bay Systems Land and Armaments were awarded $7.9 million to develop technologies for the GCV program. And just a year after closing due to budgetary pressure, the firms received another $50 million to continue said development, only now under the auspices of the Future Fighting Vehicle, or FFV, program. In June 2018, the U.S. Army announced a new strategy for upgrading its combat vehicles, the Bradley M2 replacement program called Next Generation Combat Vehicle, or NGCV. By October of that same year, it was renamed Optionally Manned Fighting Vehicle, or OMFV. The NGCV program has been significantly expanded to include not only the next generation of infantry fighting vehicles, but also tanks. March of 2019 marked the start of a race of proposals from various leading manufacturers in the military equipment industry. However, by January 2020, the circle of applicants was narrowed down to the following two options. Lynx KF-41, the work of the joint efforts of Rheinmetall and Raytheon, and Griffin III, created by the talented engineers of General Dynamics Land System. At the same time, the prototype of one of the contestants, the GDLS, was disqualified due to the fact that it turned out to be too heavy, not meeting the requirements which stated that two new generation machines had to fit into one C-17 Globemaster III. But even after the preliminary selection, a conflict of interest arose between the American Army and competing companies. The latter called the pace and goals of the program too rigid and unrealistic, since part of the cost during all this were assigned to private contractors, which forced many large companies to back out of participating. As a result, the U.S. Army gave ear to the opinion of these companies, and by April 2020, they presented the industry with a new guide featuring a five-stage approach to procurement. They promised to reduce barriers to competition and also prepared a list of requirements for the successor to the Bradley M2. Among them, an unmanned option, remote control of transport, regular operation with two crew members and enough space to accommodate at least six men, mobility of work in dense urban areas and full readiness for battle within 15 minutes, ability to super elevate weapons and simultaneously engage threats using main gun and independent weapon system, High level of protective measures, sufficient to enable survival in modern and future battlefields, given a maximum weight of 35 tons, although there are rumors that the weight limit has already been removed. Built-in training system for managing the latest military platform. The presence of diagrams, weight, cooling levels, and power sufficient to meet all the operational needs of the transport vehicle and its future improvements. Lethality, deliver accurate and deadly fire at medium distance, directed energy and missile armament usage in all weather types, capable of striking both moving and stationary targets. 
fine-tuned power management to increase operating range and fuel efficiency in order to outperform the Bradley M2 predecessor, having 300 miles of range at about 35 miles per hour. Improvements on silently operating the vehicle, increased reliability on its parts and components, as well as a significant reduction in the needed maintenance work. Among the additional requirements, the presence of reactive armor and an active protection system, or APS, was also mentioned. Naturally, such a futuristic system cannot be left without a decent engine, either. Here we have an improved version of the one placed in the Bradley M2A4 modification from 2018. Earlier versions of the BMP had to make do with the 8-cylinder diesel engine from Cummins, the VTA 903T, which boasts power of about 600 horsepower, or 447 kilowatts. It was introduced back in 1988. Let's not forget about modularity either, which implies the possibility of continuous modernization of this machine utilizing the latest technologies available during its service life, which is set at more than 20 to 30 years. To this end, the Pentagon is simultaneously developing the Modular Open Systems Approach, or MOSA. In July of 2021, the U.S. Army awarded contracts to five different parties, Point Blank Enterprises, Oshkosh Defense, Bay Systems, General Dynamics Land Systems, and Rhine Metal Vehicles. The total value of the contract was about $300 million, with the concept development process set to take no more than 15 months. The first stage, which is already in full swing, is ready for the initial design. The next step will be a competition in 2023-24, during which the teams will begin the detailed design of the future BMP. The prototyping phase will start in 2025, and by the end of 2027, the Army will choose one company to produce a small series of future vehicles. Full-scale production, according to preliminary estimates, will begin by 2030. General Glenn Dean, executive director of the Army's Ground Combat Vehicle Program, said that in the process of creating the latest BMP, the military focused on the use of model-based systems engineering and digital engineering, due to which work on the project will be much more flexible than in the case of traditional weapons development programs. Major General Ross Kaufman, in turn, emphasized that digital engineering had never been used in ground combat vehicles up until now. As far as the timing goes, everything is more or less clear. But why isn't there much talk about the cost of this miraculous beast? The only figure that has appeared in the media thus far was during this spring, when $4.6 billion were mentioned. This is what the Army plans to spend on the development of a substitute for the Bradley M2 between 2022 and 2026. But could a more practical approach make the OMFV's price be reset lower than the M2 family, which averaged about $3.17 million? What are your thoughts on this? Will the U.S. Army, after so many attempts, still be able to acquire futuristic infantry fighting vehicles by 2030? Share your predictions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to see more content just like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.